Hey, Dr. Mike here. Should you avoid seed oils? Maybe. Stay tuned to learn more with our guest registered dietitian, Holly Ryan. You're listening to Live Foreverish, a show dedicated to helping you live just a little longer. Here's your host, Dr. Mike and Dr. Crystal Gosser. All right, welcome to Live Foreverish. So, when I hear the words seed oils, I I think of healthy things, right? Um, and I thought that's where we were going with this podcast, but I was corrected by Dr. Crystal, who's my co-host, as you guys know, uh, very quickly. Dr. Crystal, um, we're talking about something different than maybe some of the healthier seed oils I was thinking about, right? Right. Uh, we're talking about refined vegetable oils. It seems to be an area of controversy right now. Uh, if you just Google it, you'll see people saying stay away like the plague and uh so i think it's a worthy conversation that needs to take place right meaning meaning these oils these refined oils we're finding them in everything now right and so there's an overconsumption well we have a guest that's going to straighten all this out for us right her name is holly ryan she's a registered and licensed dietitian nutritionist she's a wellness writer a great blogger and a social media specialist holly welcome to the show Thank you so much. Happy to be here. So, so okay, so Crystal is saying we're talking about these processed seed oils. I mean, the first one that comes to my mind is soy, right? That's like everywhere. Um, that's what we're going to talk about, right? And, and, and the problem with some of those things. Right. So I just want to provide like kind of level, level set a little bit on this topic because like you said, they are so explosive in the media right now. Avoid them at all costs. So I want to see what's really going on here with these seed oils. Are they really that seedy? So um, seed oils are are vegetable oils, right? Mm -hmm. And vegetable oils provide omega-6 fats, polyunsaturated fats, which are supposed to be healthful, you know, nutritious for us to some extent, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where part of the issue comes in is the importance of balancing these oils with other important oils like omega-3 fatty acids. Right. So what are some of the the most common seed oils? Dr. Mike mentioned soy. And I think a part of the soy controversy is that it's soy, (laughs) regardless of whether or not it's an oil or the soybean, or I think it's the idea that most of the soy is probably GMO, maybe. But I so I can understand soy, maybe being controversial. I would even look at it, so like you said, soy is a separate like controversy in itself. So mm-hmm. I would kind of even look at that separately. And okay. I, and I actually have an article about soy. If we, and I know you guys also did a podcast on that as well. Um, but in terms of seed oils themselves, so like I said, you know, seed seed oils are vegetable oils, mm-hmm. and there there's several common ones in the mm-hmm. United States. Mm-hmm. A lot of them made their way into our food system because it was part of uh, a subsidiary, subsidized crop. Oh, so corn would be one of those, right? Exactly. Okay. So corn, canola, um, let's see here, we have palm, peanut, mm-hmm. safflower, there's a bunch. And and so, but the issue isn't that they can be healthy to a certain point, right? I mean, there, there, are, there is some nutrition in these oils. The problem is what I think I'm hearing you guys say is it's it's all over the place. We're over consuming them mm. because they're almost in. I mean, all packaged products probably have some of these things in them. Um, processed foods and the grocery mm-hmm. is that that's the real issue then here. I would agree. So overconsumption paired with the underconsumption of omega three fats, um, and the problem is you know people aren't eating a lot of fish. Mm-hmm. Maybe when they are, they're eating fried fish, which actually adds more right. of the the bad of the, oils of the, in of the, yeah that's um, not that's not help tastes then, good then there's the mercury concern right so right. we we want to avoid mercury mm-hmm. so are we getting those three servings of fatty fish weekly unlikely right um that's why the omega-3 supplementation is really important mm-hmm. to help us meet well, our needs and balance out let's back up for a sec and let's explain why we're why we're talking about this this omega-6 mm-hmm that you find in the seed oil mm-hmm. and omega-3 getting more of that. What, what's, so there, there's a ratio there, right? That, that you know, we, we want to consume a certain amount of six, but probably more threes, right? And, and that's that three to six, six mm-hmm. to three, right? however people yeah. want to say it, ratio. Yeah. Tell us why that's important um, and how that may indicate 
um, you know, something being more nutritious if it has a better ratio? So a four to one ratio is what we want to strive for. And there's a six, six to three. Um, right. Uh, yes. Of s- so omega six to three mm-hmm. for every four you want, you know, every one. So four to one ratio. Right. But it's hard to get there, um, especially with our diets and diet alone. Um, and what happens is when that ratio becomes out of balance, mm-hmm. it causes inflammation. And we know that inflammation is a common denominator for a lot of chronic ailments. Um, it could become problematic for our heart health. Right. So, yeah. so and, and I get where this can be a problem because if you compare oils, the, the other option would be butter. <laughs> <laughs> so I could see where... Uh, the, the food industry or just the world was I that's I grew up with okay you the vegetable oil that's your healthy option compared to butter which yeah, you're is supposed like, to go to the oil regardless you, you, you're supposed right. to go to the oil and I think as we always do in our world yeah. then we go to the extreme and as you're mentioning that extreme now is throwing that six to three ratio way off, off because way we're, off. we're way heavy on the six mm-hmm. because that's three, what yeah. you'll find in the vegetable right. oils is that correct yes yeah. so it's heavier on the six um there's also other issues um like you're starting to mention the processing of it yes so um i could definitely get into that in a moment but i wanted to back up because this is interesting you know like when we go back to really what are seed oils what are vegetable oils mm-hmm. so um like, because olive oil is considered a vegetable oil. So not all, so while all seed oils are considered vegetable oils, mm-hmm. all vegetable oils are not necessarily seed oils. And some of the oils we consider vegetable oils don't always come from vegetables, right? So olive is actually a fruit. <laughs> I'm get, I know I'm getting really technical, that's, that's but, but I, Wait, I, I but feel I like get, the, I'm following what you're saying is here. I feel like so when you see this whole <laughs> idea of avoid vegetable oils, they are you know it's the devil on your plate. That they're kind of including olive oil in that definition, but olive oil is really it's a vegetable oil, but it's not a seed oil. It's a fruit, right? Olives, yeah. olives are fruit. Yeah. Um, what are some other oils that would fall under that category that are kind of being bundled in this bad category that may not mm-hmm. be quite so bad? So I don't know if they really are being bundled, but another example is avocado. Avocado is a fruit. We technically lump it into that vegetable oil category. Mm-hmm. But olive and well, okay, let's start with olive. Olive is arguably one of the most healthiest oils. Right, right. Um, a close second to me would be avocado. Mm-hmm. Um, good source of monounsaturated fat. And because of that, it's actually less susceptible to oxidation because it's not um, it's not as rich in the polyunsaturated fats. Mm-hmm. It's heavier on the monounsaturated. So, and it also has a really high cooking temperature. But we'll get into some of the you know, the cooking aspects later. But I just wanted to kind of mention that definition because it's important to differentiate, well, what am I really going to watch out for? What really are seed oils? So tell us about some of the processing. I think you were going to get into that Mm -hmm. because that's also a part of it. It's a a (laughs) multi-level, multi-factorial issue. I think think that's a big, I think that's part of this story, right? It isn't just the omega-6s. Right. Um, I, you know, I, my understanding is that these are highly processed. Right. Um, and there's additives being put into these oils uh, that help them to be more stable and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if you can give us some insight on th- the processing of these and how does that affect the, the, the health of that oil? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, to make these – so because polyunsaturated, because they are unsaturated, the industry – has developed a process called hydrogenation. And hydrogenation makes these oils more stable, Mm -hmm. but it also introduces trans fat, trans fatty acids. There you go. And we know trans fat is really detrimental to health, especially the artificial kind, Mm because there are some actually naturally occurring trans fats in um, some animal products, dairy and meat, but... 
the industry produced trans fat um, has been heavily linked to heart health and inflammation and other problems. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, they also use the industry also uses um, hexane and um, there there's been a lot of reports of like really bad smells coming from these factories when they're they're making these oils and it's just very off putting. So it's nice. really just ultra <laughs> refined, lots of ke- like kind of chemicals and alterations to the chemical structure. It just kind of makes you like a little bit wary of, you know, what kind of residual chemicals are ending up in these oils after processing and what, um, you know, is are yeah. they being oxidized before they even get to us? And then when we ingest these oxidized oils, is, is that a problem? So, yeah. well, and I, I would have to say, it's a little scary, the packaging that they come in as well. It's like these little flimsy plastic containers with this oil that it just looks so far removed from the actual, the, the real food yeah. that you would eat and, and the amounts of the oils that you would typically get if you were to eat those foods. That's a little concerning for me. Yeah, I want to talk about what happens when you actually cook then with these oils. But before we do... Um, going back to the six three ratio, mm-hmm. so do you guys? You guys have to. You have to. You have to guess what the average six to three ratio is in a Western diet. It's it's a lot higher than what I we think say. I know this. <laughs> I'll say uh, twenty to one. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah. Is it twenty four? No, you guys. It's a little high. Or- so this study here, or this this paper, which was published in Biomed uh, Pharmacotherapy has it at 15 to 1 versus 17 to 1, somewhere in that range. So, yeah. So it's 15 high. 15 to... Okay. Yeah, 15 to 17 to 1 is right. the 6 to 3 ratio of most Americans' diet. Right. And that's so crazy. That's pretty... That's We're walking around inflamed. Well, you know, that's what I... Sometimes <laughs> you... And you don't always feel that inflammation, but then when you get to the point where you're feeling inflamed, it that translates to brain fog that translates to joint issues, heart issues, Even gut you know, issues and stuff, gut issues yeah, yeah. Um, th- with the chronic inflammation. So when you think this is happening because yeah. potentially all the oil. So 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 you're getting all you're getting a lot of these omega 6s, which in and of themselves is not necessarily bad. It's that ratio, right? That's mm-hmm. what's really that's the bad part of this. Um, so how when we, when we cook with these oils, um, what is that doing oh, to yes. the quality of the oil? Um, and and how should we how should we be cooking with them? Should they be high heat, yeah. lower heat? I mean, like, what do you have any advice there? Yeah, so you, you do want to look out. Um, every oil has a smoke point, so that is you're gonna you're gonna want to not um, cook your oils over the temperature of the smoke point of the given oil um, because then you're gonna you're going to create some some oxidation yourself. Mm-hmm. So one tip would be use a high heat oil for cooking. Like I mentioned earlier, like avocado is a good one because it, I think it's like 500 degrees is the smoke point on that one. Wow. I was thinking peanut oil. That's what everybody's frying their turkeys in, <laughs> in the peanut oil, uh, because a Apparently, it has a really high smoke point. I've never heard that avocado was that high, although that's probably expensive. Maybe that's another. That's why because that's why that's why you don't buy it. Right. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's comparable. Olive is is, you know, kind of up there in price, but it's comparable to olive, maybe even a little bit cheaper. Yeah. I know. So olive, I use a lot of olive oil and I do I do sear meats and stuff with it, Um, although that's probably not the best oil for that. Because it can burn quickly, because it's it's right, and, and so there's, and that's why people like to use some of those other more conventional vegetable oils, isn't that right? Because so, they can take a higher heat. They can take a higher heat, but actually, you know, olive has a relatively high smoke point, um, three hundred and seventy-five to four hundred degrees. So that's the good oil, though. That's not what most people are buying in the grocery stores. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, adulteration in mm-hmm. the in the olive oil, so companies are mixing it with other oils that's what i mean by adulteration yeah, of oils. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. well i watch a lot of the food channel dr Kristen knows <laughs> that 
And they, you know, when it comes to frying food, pan frying, all that kind of stuff, they're using those those more conventional vegetable oils all the time. Canola yeah. is big, mm -hmm. right? Well, I think the other part, it's cheap. Imagine, like, if you have to deep fry something, you would have to use probably a couple bottles of olive oil. Yeah. If not, two or three bottles of olive oil. So now... It could be cheaper. I see what you're saying, yeah. right? And especially if you're running a restaurant or something like that. But how often should you be deep frying? You know what I'm saying? Oh. Like, like if, oh. if you're going to deep fry on that rare occasion, hopefully, right? Maybe you will just use the cheaper oil for that because it's supposed to be infrequently. So. <laughs> but what happens if you're... if you So these oils have a, a higher um, heat point, right? Um, but... It, to always cook at that higher point is does is that changing some of the composition of the oil and and, and, and can that change be good or bad yeah it, it it can it can change the composition and that's why we don't want to reach that smoke point because um it could actually you can form trans fats through that um overcooked oil yeah and um so that's yeah i, I so i you know i and that's what i do and i think I do that with the olive oil. I push, yeah. I push that temp up because I want oh, that sear. Oh, Dr. Mike. I want that sear. Come on now. So it's probably about 450 is where you're, I, I don't, you're I don't, searing. I probably, yeah, yeah. A, good, a good steak or something. Yes. You know, you want to get that good sear and then get it in the oven and finish mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always pushing the oils. But, you know, you, if you, a good olive oil, Dr. Mike, with the high polyphenols, that is helping to... <laughs> To prevent some of that transformation and, that's happening in the oil. But that's not, here's what's funny. That's not really the ultimate reason I cook with the olive oil. I find those other oils like canola, when you push the temperature, I think it has a weird taste. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a weird smell too. Like I don't, the smell's not good, but when I, but when I eat like a, you know, fry some chicken up and, mm -hmm. and really get it high in that canola, I feel like I taste something. Yeah, I agree. But with the olive oil, I don't get that when I sear at a high temperature. And something else that um, that I read, because I know that there's a blog article that you wrote yes. on this topic, and you mentioned something about reusing the oil and that right. being a, a problem as well. Absolutely. Oh. So you want to avoid reusing your my oil. My grandma, my Greek grandma is not going to like this. And that's why also <laughs> at, <grandma. laughs> at the restaurants, you know, it's, it's almost... <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> um, <laughs> She's gonna get the giggles up. Well, listen, I, I don't. I'll, 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 st I'll just let me explain. I mean, in the, in the old country, they didn't have a lot. Yeah, they had to reuse everything, mm -hmm. and it, whether it was you know oil from bacon or whether it was canola or what, it didn't matter. They reused oil I, until the point finally when I think it had such a bad smell. Mm -hmm. That was when my grandma went. Well, I'll try to use it one more time. I, well, Dr. Mike, I would have to say growing up, and that's your grandma, so yeah. I can make a confession. Growing up, when you use the oil, we always had the little glass container, and you poured that Pour oil in there, and it was stored over the, you, the we, stove. Uh, right for us, there. it was on the counter. <clears throat> there was this big jar of usually like bacon fat, and next to that was like your, your right. table oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was standard over practice. Over. Yep. Absolutely. But that's obviously... We shouldn't do that. <laughs> well, at home, you know, it's a little bit easier to not do that. But at restaurants, you don't know how often they're changing the oil. Listen. Like, I'm sure there's regulations in place that says you need to change your oil this often. But think about it, like multiple batches of fries, like French fries. How often are I, they dumping I, that oil out? I'm telling you right, not that often. Yeah. There's no... Yeah, and sometimes you can you, tell... It, you can tell... You the night, oh, this was fresh oil. Like, you, you can tell if that oil was fresh and if, sometimes. And, and when you go into those some of those restaurants, and if you smell that smell, that heavy oil, mm -hmm. they're not changing that oil. So here's an interesting study. A 2022 study measured the changes in fatty acid composition in edible oils after repetitive short-time heating, kind mm -hmm. of like, you know, that resembled conventional household use. Um, they found that repeated heating of vegetable oils resulted in a significant decrease in the nutritional in the nutritionally mostly beneficial mostly beneficial polyunsaturated fatty acid <laughs> values mm -hmm. while values of trans fat and saturated fatty acids with mostly unfavorable nutritional effects in significantly increased so yeah. there you have it yeah so so I got a lot of trans fats from when I went to my grandma's house. <laughs> there, you, I mean, that's reason enough for me to not order anything fried yeah. out. 
Yeah, like better, you're better. It, do it yourself. Do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, Holly, you know, not to put you on the spot, like, so, so let's help the audience out a little bit, right? So, mm-hmm. we discussed a lot about the six to three ratio and how important it is to get some threes in there, right? Bring the sixes down, get some threes, no doubt about that. Um, we talked a little bit about getting these oils too hot, trans fats form, change the composition, right? Mm-hmm. Storing it and reusing it, all that's great, but. At the end of the day, they're, they're going to use oils. Mm-hmm. So, so give us your top four or five healthy oils that, that you think these are the ones that you, you should go with. Right. So I kind of alluded to some of these earlier, but, you know, definitely the olive oil, avocado oil. Um, grapeseed oil is another one I use sometimes. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, it has a lot of antioxidant value to it because of you know we know the grape seed is is excellent um really when it comes down to it and it, this this amazes me every time every topic i study balance variety it always comes back to that yeah, variety yeah, like that. variety is always key so you know ultimately when it comes to fat consumption variety is key to ensure we have a good fatty acid uh profile for optimal health um and you know some good grass-fed grass-finished butter can mm-hmm. be used. Um, oh, we yay. like we like our butter. <laughs> Chris and I talk about butter a lot. <laughs> yeah, and another, you know, um, ghee, which is cl- basically clarified yeah. butter. Mm-hmm. So, so butter is it can be used in moderation yeah. too. It, That's when you take the ghee is when you they, they take the fat you 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 scrape the fat off the top or something, or it's and right. you're left with like this refined less water in the in the butter. Well, I think right? I think it's just more refined. The butter. the fat is removed. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't call it as much refined as I would as call it like kind of separated you're you're separating the fatty portion okay. um that can yeah that can be used as well so it's not you know we started earlier with focus on the oils but you know variety so you you mm-hmm. can include some of that grass fed butter and and, and and if you're gonna on occasion fry some chicken or something that you like to fry mm-hmm. canola oil is probably fine for that if you're just doing it on occasion you know what expeller pressed when you're gonna choose the canola Look for expeller pressed oil, which means it wasn't processed with s- such high heat and mm. all of those those industrial methods they used. It, it was treated a little bit more gentle. Okay, so <laughs> look for exp- expeller pressed. Yes, and so it's not quite so gimmicky. If I want a potato chip that's fried in avocado oil or the olive oil, that mm-hmm. would be probably a better option because they're making them now. Yes. You can buy it there in the health food store. She goes right they're, to her chips. There are potato <laughs> chips there. Yeah. And so I've, if you're really mm-hmm. craving a chip, look for one that was fried in those healthier oils. Yeah, they have. They definitely have avocado oil potato chips. I've tried them, and they're good. This is great. I mean, this is a, a lot of information. Um, I think eye-opening for some people, right, that, you know, how, how these oils are made, mm-hmm. over overheating them to, can have an, uh, an, an issue with developing some things you don't want. Mm-hmm. I think a big thing that, that came out of this is that 6 to 3 ratio. You know, most Americans. I mean, it's all six, and that's not good. So we got to we got to rev up those threes. Um, Holly Ryan is a registered and licensed dietitian nutritionist. She's a blogger, writer, social media specialist. Uh, Holly, if somebody wanted to learn a little bit more about what you do and, and read some of your blogs, how can they find you? So you can visit um, the Life Extension blog, our sponsor at lifeextension.com slash wellness. That's the wellness uh, URL. And you could also find us, you could find Life Extension on Instagram, at Life Extension. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Pinterest. And then my personal handle is um, at Holly Ryan underscore RD. Um, and right. I do have, do you have a couple other tips if we have a few more minutes if you wanted to add Sure, add throw in. it in there. Give <laughs> yeah. us your tips. Okay. Well, so, we'll, we'll call this the key takeaways. How about yeah, this? Your, so these are your, these are your ultimate tips. Yes. For the audience. Ready? Go. <laughs> so official. Okay. So <laughs> store we didn't talk about storage. That's why I wanted to add in a few other things. So storage. So keeping your oils in a dark bottle away from heat and light are gonna help prevent them from going rancid and okay. oxidizing good. quicker. Good tip. And even maybe in the fridge, depending on the oil, like those really, really um like like walnut oil, like some of the rare ones that those are very unstable. So maybe even mm. keep those in the fridge. And 
I've seen a shelf life like even like three to four months in studies where the manufacturer labels them maybe a year out. Really, mm-hmm. they're starting to go rancid like much sooner. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a good takeaway, Holly. Most people keep their oils on a, a counter long or something. Time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So definitely pay attention to the dates and even maybe toss them sooner, if, especially if. They're just sitting there for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, the name of the test, if you want to check your omega profile and see where you're at, it's called the omega index blood test. So you can okay. check on your, your fatty acid uh, profile. Um, and then we talked about packaged foods. So limiting those processed foods, um, you know, they're found in like like crackers, like things you wouldn't really even think about, but also... Like if you're buying a store-bought salad dressing, mm. pay attention because those are heavily oil-based. So mm-hmm. pay attention to what oil they're using. Mm-hmm. And really, it's like kind of hard to find a good salad dressing like prepackaged. So just whip one up if you can. Make your own vinaigrette. Yeah, yeah. like that's great. Yeah, just like and it's gonna be really like herbaceous. Like you can put lots of fresh herbs in there, and it'll be it'll taste delicious. Homemade dressing Mm -hmm. so go for that if possible and then you could choose your oil base you know olive oil or or what have you and then um you know also besides the processed foods like things like margarine Mm, and avoid margarines and even a lot of your like pre-made like pie dough crust and like Mm. biscuits all of all these things are going to have like those hydrogenated fats that we want to stay away from that's why they taste so All good. All right. Those are some <laughs> good takeaways, Dr. Mike. Uh, Holly, give us your personal, um, where people can find you again, your personal. Yeah. So you can find me at on Instagram at Holly Ryan underscore RD. And then, oh, man, I have not used Twitter lately, but I believe it's the same <laughs> It's the same handle on Twitter. But I'm more active on Instagram if you want to find me there. All right. We, we, we'll, we'll check you out on Instagram. Uh, thanks for coming on the uh, show today. Fascinating information about seed oils. Now I understand where we were going with this, mm-hmm. Dr. Crystal. <laughs> so you can bring it down a notch. All right. <laughs> um, don't forget, liveforeverish.com. We have a ton of other podcasts that you can download, like, share, comment, and subscribe so you never miss a show. We actually call it the one-two punch. Boom, boom. Yes. Liveforeverish.com. You go in, you give your email, and then you pick, you know, your aggregate or your app that you like to listen to mm-hmm. podcast right there. One, two. You join our family. You subscribe so you never miss a show. That's liveforeverish.com. I'm Dr. Mike. Thanks for listening. <laughs>